Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, so today I'm bringing you uh, the Nook HD Plus review. And, um, it's, it's been very hard to do this review, to be honest. It's not going to be like my typical review where I go over the nine points, simply because um, this device does definitely fall flat. So I'm just going to give um, three highlights of it and three downsides to it um, so you guys can uh, see these differences. So um, one of the first highlights is that this screen is a really good quality. It's a 1080p screen, um, so really good uh, screen quality and has a lot to show for it. Uh, the internet connection, for some reason on this device, I have about three other devices hooked up to the same internet connection, and it's going fine. But for some reason, it's a little bit off, so I don't know if we'll get to see the video quality on here, because like I said, it just keeps going in and out. Uh, for some reason, it just keeps dropping signal. Um, that obviously is not a good sign, but it just keeps dropping signal. So, probably... Better. Okay, uh, it's just not showing up, so the screen quality I want to show you guys, but um, just very clear overall, I mean you can see in the calendar, and uh, most things it does, it's very sharp, uh, you can read out text very easily, um, so very crisp in uh, pretty much everything you can see. So um, that's definitely one highlight of it, that I do like about it. Uh, the second thing is as an e-reader. So obviously a lot of people are familiar with the uh, Nook um, store and um, it has a lot of nice features for it. Um, and one of them is the books, so it's going to be a really big uh, part that a lot of people tend to like on here. And you can see the clarity in this text. Now this text is pretty small. I think I made it on the second smallest one that it could be. Yes, so pretty small and yet very clear, very crisp um, overall. So really nice in the way the text is presented and this can be very enjoyable to read books. So um, if this was what Nook wanted to do, then that is great because that is what this is ideal for. It is really great for reading books, very clear, very sharp. Um, and at this price point, only the Kindle really matches it in clarity uh, for the 9-inch um, device, as where the 7-inch uh, device, it is actually better than every other, um, every other tablet on the market uh, for its uh, clarity and screen size. So, you have to give it to Nook for doing that. Uh, 1440 by 900 on the regular HD model, this is the HD Plus model. Um, is really, uh, really good, very good quality. Now, um, the last part is it's very, very simple. And I mean very, very simple. Um, this, uh, you have a little shelf kind of uh, reminiscent of like how uh, Nook, or sorry, uh, Amazon did their shelf. So you have a little shelf at the top, and then you can have little icons on the home pages um, to kind of lay out everything. And uh, you can kind of move things around as you can see fit. And the other thing is, is it kind of doesn't always match up then when you do that. But just so you can see, you can kind of move things around very easily. Um, so. There's your regular apps, you have an app drawer, a library, web, email, and shopping. So here's your library, you can see books, magazines, apps, you know, newspapers, all those kind of things, your entire apps. And I will tell you, this is all of the best free apps you can get. So just let you know, if you not see a free app that you usually have, that means it's probably paid for or it's not available. I will go to in a second. 
Uh, email app, very simple, very uh, just very standard, nothing too fancy about it. Um, and you have a notification panel right here at the top. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, notification panel right here at the top. You have your settings bar right here, and then you can go to all settings to see everything. And um, then lastly, you do have your Nook Today, which um, is just like recommendations from Nook that um, it sees from your interest in either uh, websites, from the books you've read, and um, you know, apps you've downloaded, it just gives recommendations. Now again, this internet is for some reason loading really slow when it's not on any other device we have, but uh, that's just one unfortunate thing right now. Now, the flaws. Um, so, there's three major flaws. Uh, much like the Kindle had three flaws, um, which you can check that video out because I did do uh, three flaws that the Kindle has. And uh, the first flaw is by far the market. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the market this device has is very small. And I mean very small. It just, it's really hard to find a lot of apps that you tend to like. Um, and it's just, I, I don't think they have a good enough uh, category system. I think they should have a free app um, section, even if you go by a browsing category, you don't have that. So I just think like best free apps would help them a lot in just their organization. Uh, but in terms of a lot of the must-have apps, um, let me show you like uh, popular apps and must-have games. So, you know, a lot of them you do have to pay for. Um, there's not many free ones. Um, even like I thought it was funny that a calculator costs ninety-nine cents. So things like that, just things you don't normally pay for that you would want to. Um, that you wouldn't want to really do it. It's just, it's really hard to. And you do have some things like Netflix, um, Evernote, which is all that a lot of people use. Uh, then they're fine with that. You have Dropbox, um, and you have a couple of other things. So you do have some apps that are fine, but like any game really um, is going to cost you. There's almost no free ones. Um, there's like Fashion Icon, let's see if we can, out of all the popular games, the must-have games, let's see which ones are free. Oregon Trail, Settler, um, Minesweeper, Ice Age Village, and I think that might be it. And this is out of a hundred games, I think I've named like four so far. So yeah. Um, just to give you an idea, it's just not that many, not that many, uh, great, it's a very, very small store. Which wouldn't be a problem except for one huge flaw this device has. And that is that you cannot install, um, third-party apps in this device. Nook has blocked it, and unlike their first device, they do, do not give you a way to override that. So I think this is a really big flaw that they need to address immediately. The original Nook allowed you to install third-party third apps, um, as well as so did the Kindle Fire HD, which is its main competitor, and it allows you to. So not being able to do that really limits your device uh, extremely, and I think it's just a really big flaw um, that this device suffers from. So, in my eyes, it's not redeemable. That, that you, cannot, you cannot block all third-party apps or APK files from being installed. And that's what this device does, and you know, the Nooks, or the Kindle's limited um, app store could be uh, a moot point for uh, the Kindle because you can install third-party apps and install third-party market which has a lot more apps. However, you cannot do this with this device. So that is a big flaw of it. Uh, the second flaw is web browsing. Now, I know we're having trouble with our web browsing, so it might not allow me to even go to it anymore. Let me uh, sign on to a different network that was going slow, but it still did load the pages. So, just so we can see, obviously websites don't take as much internet as Netflix and other things do. So 
So I'm going to let this page finish loading first. Um, but the first thing you can notice, just bring this up a little closer, is that a lot of things are legible at a distance. And that, of course, is because of the fact that this device has um, really good pixel density, it's 1080p, so it's really good clarity. However, the fault in this, now that the page is fully loaded, is that the browser is a bit slow. And now it's going a little bit faster, and let's try to pinch the zoom, because that was what's really... It actually was, did get a little bit faster. Um, this is pretty inconsistent, though. A second ago, it was going really slow, and now it's going a bit faster. But you can see even pinch to zoom kind of does some artifacting. And now let's go to Engadget, refresh the app, or refresh the page, rather. So this page is loading a bit quicker. Uh, the other, the other, um, this website does have a lot more going on in it. So if you refresh it and have it load all the way, we'll see that we'll see a difference. This has a lot more um, HTML5 going on, so it does definitely slow it down a little bit more in comparison. And it's almost loaded, but uh, just let just letting you guys see that it, it really it's inconsistent with its web browsing. I would say even more than the Kindle. Again, I re I'm talking about the Kindle because it's its direct competitor. The reason the Nook came out was really to compete with the Kindle um, in a lot of ways. In terms of tablets, uh, Nook was its own, but in terms of um, before the Kindle came out in e-readers, but the reason Nook went into tablets is definitely because of the Kindle. So, um, it's just really inconsistent in web browsing, and I would say it's slower than the Kindle one. Now, um, the third and final, um, definitely point that brings this device down is price and value. This device is priced at $299 for the 16 gig, I believe, and $329 for the 32 gig, I believe. Um, so it's $30 more for um, the bigger storage, but mainly the, the real thing is price versus and versus value. So for this device being the same price as the Kindle HD Plus, um, or sorry, Kindle Fire HD uh, 8.9, um, I really don't see this one offering anything more than the Kindle Fire uh, can. And um, that's a real problem because this isn't offering anything that the Kindle Fire doesn't have. And because it's not, I think this is its main flaw. I like the look, uh, I like the feel of it. I don't really care too much for the look, but it definitely is comfortable to hold for a long period of time and definitely lighter compared to the Kindle. Uh, but just not not in the same realm of obvious usefulness. I think it's a great e-reader, decent web browser at best, um, just because it's inconsistency, but really when it comes right down to it, it's not offering you anything more than the Kindle Fire. Uh, not to mention that if um, you spend $100 more, you can get, um, you know, or even at the same price, you can get a 10-inch tablet, like from the Samsung Galaxy Tab, uh, that's on sale right now for the Tab 2, or you can even get the Nexus 10 for $399, which is uh, the latest and greatest Android device. So I feel that there's just a lot better offerings out there um, than to consider this tablet as a really front runner, and I, I think there's a lot of better alternatives to it. Um, even the Nexus 7, which is at $199, uh, saving you $100 definitely brings a lot more um, if you're just sort of looking for a smaller e-reader. The clarity is still very good and it offers a lot more in terms of uh, apps, ecosystem, and you can still get the Nook e-reader um, e app for it. So yeah guys, that was a uh, semi-full review. Um, I, I just, I couldn't even do a lot of the normal stuff that I do on reviews for this device because it has so many issues and so many problems and so many limitations. Alright. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions if you have any. 
And thank you for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy.